Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing essentially a KU haul. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a sucker for Kindle Unlimited. I'm also a sucker for shopping for books. So like what better way to spend time than to combine the two? I wanted to go in and reset my Kindle essentially for fall. I feel like there's both books that I'm currently interested in that I wanna download just so I have them in front of me. But then also there are quite a few books on my physical TBR where the books are on KU. And if I'm gonna actually download the books on KU, I might actually read the physical books. If there's one thing about me, it's that if I have a book able to be read on my Kindle, I'm gonna read it on my Kindle. Honestly, I don't think I could actually tell you the last time that I read a book physically, which I probably should circle back to that. Now that I'm thinking about that, I should probably, um, Maybe I should read a book physically, but regardless, I'm going to download a whole bunch more books on my Kindle that I'm very, very excited about. I'm someone who, whenever it is time for me to start a new book and when I can't really necessarily decide what I want to read, I will pick up my Kindle and I'll scroll through my library. And if there are good things on there, I'm going to be a lot more prompted and a lot more excited to read. But then if there's nothing necessarily new or like things that I don't necessarily want to read in that moment, my mood reader brain isn't necessarily satisfied by what's currently on here. Um, I don't necessarily want to pick up a book and then I start feeling like I'm in a reading slump. So we are going to go ahead and stock this sucker up with all of the good things. My book club friend, Amariah, she created a Kindle lock screen, if you will. And then I also just went and redid all my Kindle stickers. So she is looking cute on the outside and it is time to stock up the inside first things first i'm gonna go ahead and clear out everything that's in here burn for me and white hot and the hidden legacy series i've read both of those books already so i'm gonna go ahead and return both of those i do have wildfire which is the third book in that series and i definitely would like to continue on with this series but i'm thinking i might end up returning that one just to make room for some fall things specifically because i'm not sure that i necessarily want to read that right now house of bane and blood i've already read and i can return that quicksilver Sweet baby Quicksilver, love her. I'm gonna go ahead and return her because I have already read her. Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt. I'm actually gonna keep because I think this is supposed to be more of like a cozy fall read, right? Or is this more of like a spring situation? Unsure. Let's go ahead and go through the things on my physical TBR that are definitely on Kindle Unlimited as well. Number one, Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. I have been saving this for when I have been in a desperate vampire mood. I'm desperately in the mood for vampires. So this is the first and foremost book that is going on my Kindle Unlimited TBR. I'm really hoping to get to this quite soon. Um, I am desperate for it at this point. <laughs> Number two, Vows and Ruins. I read Blood and Steel a little bit earlier this year and I so desperately want to continue on in this series. I did just get the physical copy pretty recently and I am so excited to get to it. I am so desperate to continue on in this series. I need it. A book that's newer to my TBR that I bought specifically because I wanted to read it for fall. Bestie Val has been hyping this series up and I really just want to know what it's all about. However, it is on Kindle Limited and the sticker's not going to come off at this moment so we're just going to ignore it for now. This book is solidly also at the top of my physical TBR and is also at the top of my Kindle Unlimited TBR because this whole series is on Kindle Unlimited. I know that the last book in this series very very recently came out and this book has been on my tbr for a very very long time like ever since it was indie and i just kept putting it off um it's time past time the last book that's on my physical tbr and you're just gonna have to trust me on this one because it is somewhere in this house but i cannot find it uh the house made by frida mcfadden i'm halfway ashamed that i haven't read this yet because it is such a very popular book but i'm just very curious about what all the girlies are talking about i think i want to listen to the audiobook on this one but it is on ku so i want to go ahead and download it so that way i have the physical if you will reminder um to actually read it whenever i'm picking up a new book but then also because apparently it's nowhere around this house. I have looked in every single bookshelf that I have. So you're just gonna have to trust that this is on my physical TBR. Um, but I wanna read it. I feel like I'm in the mood for a very um, adrenaline rushy kind of thriller. And I don't necessarily know that this will be it, but we can give it a go. So let's talk books on the TBR. Tori just posted her autumn TBR video. So obviously we're gonna start there. I watched this video earlier and went through and opened tabs on my computer for the books that I really desperately wanted to read. Um, in no particular order. Peaches and Honey. I did also watch Rachel's reading vlog with this one. Um, here's the thing. I've also not read Addie LaRue. I've read like third... I want to say that I read 30 pages a while ago and then just put it down because I wasn't in the mood for it. I feel like I should read it and I feel like those both would be fall books that would be good. I know Addie LaRue is also on KU and I do have that on my physical TBR. Do I also borrow Addie LaRue? Do I borrow Peaches and Honey? I feel like I start with Peaches and Honey regardless of if I get to Addie LaRue or not. Um, Peaches and Honey just sounds so interesting. It is a shape-shifting god and immortality granting Peach and a woman gifted with forever. 
England, 1184, Anna is used to hunger and hardship. Ever since she was 17, when the pale shadows of her vitiligo were spotted, she has spent more than a decade struggling to survive alone in exile. Then a single act of kindness towards a beautiful stranger and the taste of a divine peach changes Anna's life forever. Suddenly, her body is untouched by time as it is by harm. As she watches a world change around her, knowing every human connection is only temporary, there is only one person she trusts to always return, no matter the years or distance. The shape-shifting god who gifted her with immortality. I don't know, that just sounds really interesting. And I feel like the whole wistful passage of time nostalgia thing is very fault-coded. So I'm definitely excited about this one. And then we have The Poisoner by Ivy Ophelia. This one is, have you ever wondered how long it would take for a lethal dose of arsenic to kill you? 35 hours, 29 minutes, and 15 seconds. I should know. I counted them myself. Amidst the gaslit alleys and cobblestones of Victorian London, two killers find themselves entangled in a waltz they cannot escape. Alina Liss, a botanist and hobbyist poisoner, has a pastime of killing unsavory men in her twisted sense of poetic justice. When she targets the conceited playboy, Silas Forbes, only to, okay, first of all, Silas Forbes is a name. Um, only to find him in her apothecary the following week. She discovers human men are the least of her problems. The pair's unlikely association sparks gossip among affluent society. As her mysterious bond deepens, a chilling truth emerges. Concealed identities, lurking foes, and questions as plentiful as the Hydra's head brew within this haunting gothic tale of violent passion. Will Silas and Elena find themselves in each other's arms, or will the shadows of their past keep them apart? It sounds incredibly interesting, okay? And I also feel like a serial killer style romance um, is right up there with me. I do also have Leather and Lark that technically should go in my physical TBR, but it's in my living room, so I completely forgot that it even existed apparently, so add that to the list. But also the Mind F series, I read it last year and was completely obsessed with it, and that kind of darker, murdery, stabby style romance is just this time of year and I love it so this one is definitely also very very high on the TBR and then naturally Phantasma um <laughs> I have seen nothing but this book all the way around and of course that just means that I need to know what it's all about there's a deadly competition situation in here and reading the synopsis it sounds very similar to Caraval and I didn't necessarily love Caraval but I felt like the plot had a lot of promise and I feel like this might be the darker more fun more spicy version that I would probably like a lot more than I like the original Caraval book. So reading the synopsis, Welcome to Phantasma, which first of all, if you start your synopsis off with Welcome to the World, I feel welcome. There are only two rules to the game, stay alive and don't fall in love. When Ophelia's sister disappears, there's only one way to save her. Ophelia must enter Phantasma, a deadly contest inside a haunted mansion, and claim its prize, a single wish. Phantasma is a maze of twisting corridors and lavish ballrooms of demons and temptations. Ophelia will face nine challenges, each more dangerous than the last. There can only be one winner, and the other contestants will stop at nothing to eliminate their rivals. <laughs> it sounds so dramatic. Every day, the house creates new monsters. That's giving a little bit of um, a deadly education. But just as Ophelia's fears threaten to overwhelm her, a mysterious stranger offers her a bargain. Charming, arrogant, and infuriatingly attractive, Blackwell claims he can guide her through the lethal trials ahead. All he asks in return is 10 years of her life? Okay. Ophelia knows she shouldn't trust him. Blackwell doesn't seem dangerous, but appearances can be deceptive. Worse still, she feels a dark and irresistible attraction drawing them closer. Her life is on the line, but in Phantasma, the only thing deadlier than losing the game is losing your heart drama okay it just sounds like drama and that's all that i could ever want truthfully see tori had mentioned anathema is it anathema or anathema anathema i don't know oh it's the same person who wrote not to Kadia. Oh. Whenever you scroll through Kindle Unlimited titles, this one also pops up as like similar titles. So I'm kind of curious about this one as well. Noctacadia. Okay, maybe I should just read Noctacadia first. Also scrolling through here, let's talk about Fairy Dale for a second. <laughs> I need to circle back to it. I'm 70% of the way through. The 200 pages is a lot of pages, but like also I would like to finish it. I don't know that I ne would necessarily put this on your TBR if you do see it, but I wouldn't. I don't. See, I don't know. I feel like I. I'll ever found the water bottle. If you're in the mood for a really slow moving character study almost across these people's lives, it could be interesting. I just felt like they didn't really have a lot of chemistry. It was very fast burn and all of the chemistry that had already built previously was previous. Like you didn't get to see any of that moving forward. So I don't know. It just like wasn't 
my cup of tea I don't think that I necessarily would recommend that one however if you are interested in it it would be a great time of year to read it speaking of books that would be a great time of year to read Lady of Darkness by Melissa K. Rorick I've had this book I borrowed this book from Katie apparently on June 1st I have been wanting to read this for a hot minute and I feel like a darker fantasy romance would just be elite right now um We've got some sisters, we've got some fae, we've got some assassins, we've got an assassin lord, we've got all of these things that I feel like I would be really into. And I've also heard really, really good things about the series that happens after this one. And I would love to read this series and then get into that series. So we got to kind of start somewhere and then move on into other things later. So I'm interested. Hopefully, maybe sometime sooner rather than later, we'll actually get to it. Another fantasy romance series that I have heard nothing but things about recently, A Court This Cruel and Lovely. I have also had this on my TBR for a hot minute. And my roommate just recently finished Akatar. We were discussing all of the Akatar theories and of course that led us to TikTok. And everyone on TikTok, I kept getting videos of people saying, don't know what to read after Akatar, read this series. It's really good. And I was like, okay. I'm interested. Amazon's blurb says, for fantasy romance readers who love Raven Kennedy, Amanda Boucher, and Carissa Broadman, this slow burn enemy to lover series will enchant you. I love slow burn. I love enemies to lovers. I don't know what could be missing from this book to make it more perfect for me. Apart from it, maybe a dragon or two, but you know, you can't win them all. It says, for years when I fell asleep, I dreamt of a man with blazing green eyes and a cruel smile. The day I met him, the ruthless mercenary leaves me for dead. Awkward. Uh, just hours after humans are born, the gods take what little power we have. In return, they protect our borders from the vicious, merciless fae. The humans who manage to keep their power are known as the corrupt, and they are burned. When my forbidden power is discovered, oops, uh -huh, I'm forced to flee my tiny village and the life I adore. To survive, I make a desperate bargain with the mercenary who abandoned me at my weakest. Our deal is simple. I'll help him and his mysterious friends sneak into the city, and he'll help me learn to wield the strange, dark power I've always kept hidden. The power that may just be the key to my survival? But the ruthless mercenary is hiding secrets of his own, secrets that threaten the safety of everyone I love, secrets that could tear this kingdom and perhaps even this world apart. I don't know, I'm into it. Um, this is also a completed series, which I'm in the mood for because I feel like I have been kind of bopping around and reading this first books in series in a lot of cases and then just never, you know, circling back to continuing on in the series. So the idea of a completed series where I can just sit down and binge them all is appealing, even though I could have done this, but like actually sitting down and doing that. Sounds like a great time. So I'm definitely interested in this series and it's solidly on the TBO. <laughs> okay, so these next two books, just hear me out for a second. First of all, I love a good, dark, spooky, dark, spooky read, okay? Whether that's a thriller, whether that's a fantasy romance, whether it's something more horror-y, which is oddly enough what I'm in the mood for. So if you have any good recommendations for that, let me know. Um, however, you gotta have a palate cleanser in between here and there. Number one palette cleanser that I'm potentially, I don't know if I want to read this just yet, Wild Eyes by Elsie Silver. I think I want to keep holding on this, but like if I want to have a palette cleanser, this will be the first in line. I liked Wild Love. I just, I didn't think it was the best thing ever, but also Chestnut Springs and Gold Rush Ranch are some of my all-time favorite series. And so I feel like another book by her would hit. So I'm curious to see if this book is still good. Is it going to be better than Wild Love? Am I going to like it better than Wild Love? So I'm really hopeful. So I feel like I'm just really hopeful about this book, but I'm also kind of scared. So I might hold it off a little bit longer, but also it's in the background. This next one. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to put the picture of this book cover here and don't don't question it okay um it's married to the alien cowboy cat at spicy cats reads had recommended the second book in the series to tori and so i saw it on tori's goodreads and she was like yeah, yeah it sounds like it's gonna be a fun time and i was like yeah okay sounds like a fun time so then it was my turn to recommend books for our local book club and we get to pick three of them and then we all vote from the three and i was like i couldn't really decide i ended up picking like face off by chelsea Curturo, guild by raven kennedy and then in the alien cowboy romance because why not guild almost won the vote by just like the tiniest bit however we were just feeling unhinged I think Married to the Alien Cowboy is officially my book club pick for my local book club <sighs> oops um however I'm really excited about this one because it's giving cowboy romance but also intergalactic cowboy romance in which you get the cowboy romance but then also it's an alien um in you know space so that could be fun like it's giving last frontier situations it's giving a fun time however when you actually read the synopsis for this one tell me that this doesn't just sound like the absolute best time a quiet alien cowboy, a human woman on the run, and one very messy marriage of convenience? What could possibly go wrong? I, I don't know about you, but I feel like nothing could go wrong. 
Um, in debt and on the run from a crime lord whose nose I may or may not have broken, I take the first ticket off world that comes my way. It's an all expenses paid one way trip to an isolated ranching outpost. The only catch, I have to marry an alien cowboy. Oh, darn the luck. My plan is simple enough. Shack up with my groom, Silar, and convince him to keep me during the first month of our marriage. As long as he doesn't decide to send me back and after the 30 day trial period, I'll be safe. But maybe my plan isn't so great after all. Silar talks more to his animals than he does to me. Seems perplexed by every wifely duty I tried to perform for him and goes to offensively great lengths to avoid touching me. Other than his eyes glowing bright white every time he looks at me, I have no idea what's going on in my new husband's head. Meanwhile, he shows me in subtle, wordless ways just how good a man he can be when he thinks that no one else is watching. Yep, my plan officially sucks because now it's not just my life at risk if Tyler sends me away after 30 days, it's my stupid human heart. What's up with all of these lives at risk but also the hearts at risk synopses um, that's happening? Anyway, this finishes off with Welcome to the Cowboy Colony Planet, where men outnumber one in ten to one and cattle outnumber them all. I don't know. This could be fun. This could be terrible. This could be a really great time. So I'm really hopeful. And this is on the KU TBR at the moment. We'll report back at the end of October. There are a couple other books on here that I just want to double check. First of all, The Games God Plus Play. I'm really interested in this book and I feel like this would be a fun like magic -y kind of book to put on the TBR. It's not necessarily like a fall feeling book, but it's a new release that I would be interested in reading sooner rather than later. Ren in the Holly Library is also kind of like a bunch of monsters running around a dystopia in New York and I feel like it was kind of just silly goofy and I feel like I could also really be in the mood for a silly goofy. The Familiar, the Familiar is on my TBR but it's not on KU unfortunately. Another book that's also on my TBR but it's not KU so I'm not going to talk about it too long, A Discovery of Witches. I would really like to read this. I've read the first two books like 20, what it would have been like 2017, 2018 or so forever ago. I feel like these books would be perfect for fall and I'm just, I'm really into the idea. So now that I'm talking about reading books physically and not necessarily on my kindle those might be what i read one dark window is on KU. okay if you've not already read one dark window might i recommend i feel like everyone's been talking about one dark window and how that's a good book to read but if you have were specifically looking for books on ku to read apparently it's on ku now which is surprising info and i love to see it heartless hunter is also a good one on ku i searched horror books kindle unlimited and what lies beyond the veil showed up in the sponsored section. I don't necessarily want horror. I want really scary thriller, which is like kind of horror, but I really want all like the thrilling elements of a thriller. A flicker in the dark. The boyfriend. I feel like I just need to start with Housebane, even though I don't necessarily know that that's gonna be all that scary. I read The Inmate by Freedom McFadden last year for a book club and I thought it was fine. It wasn't just like, incredible i did feel like there were a lot of moments in which i was on the edge of my seat and i feel like that's definitely what i'm looking for so i'm hopeful that a freedom mcfadden would scratch the edge her dragon daddy a second chance shifter romance count me in especially with a name like that okay here's that's not like kindle unlimited i really should filter by kindle unlimited but like why would i do that kindle unlimited filter God of Malice. Okay, that's sponsored. So these books are like sponsored books, but they're definitely not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, The Teacher by Frieda McFadden. Here's the thing. A psychological thriller is kind of the mood that I'm in right now. I just don't know how I feel about a student teacher situation. Gothic Kana is on KU. Okay, I bought this book in Nashville. It's on my physical TBR. I couldn't necessarily decide if I was in the mood to read it. However, it's on KO. The Eternal Romance of Beauty and the Beast meets the gothic suspense of Dracula in this erotic dark academia story of epic love. They shouldn't have caught each other's eye. It cannot be, but a chill-inducing century-old mystery forces them to collide. People have disappeared every five years over the past century. Corvina's getting clues to unraveling it all, and Vad needs to keep an eye on her. And so it begins a tale of the mysterious, the morbid, the macabre, and a deep love that blossoms in the unlikeliest of places. Okay, wait, that kind of sounds interesting. I feel like if there's any time that I would read it, it would definitely be fall. So maybe I do need to give it a go. Maybe it's time. Maybe I just, maybe I don't need to be reading it. I'm un, I'm unsure. Direction's unclear. Regardless, I, I'm feeling like it could be a fun time, potentially. Let's look at Noctikiti real quick. The dead teach the living. Interesting. After watching my mother succumb to a mysterious illness, I promised myself two things. I'd find the cure for what ravaged her and leave the godforsaken city where she abandoned me. Four years later, I received an acceptance letter from Dracadia University, one of the oldest, most prestigious schools in the country, nestled on a secluded island off the coast of Maine. <laughs> It's rumored to be haunted by the souls of the mental patients exiled there centuries before, those whose bones are said to make up the island's 
white sandy shores. And restless ghosts aren't even its most daunting peculiarity. And Deverick Bramall, known on campus as Dr. Death, is a brilliant pathologist in charge of Midnight Lab. He's also my devastatingly handsome professor who seems to loathe tenacious first years like me. Except his dark and enigmatic gaze tells me all the ways he'd devour me if given the chance. And his stolen kisses burn my lips with forbidden jealousy. I crave his authority. He aches for redemption. Together we're toxic. Delicious fodder for the prying eyes hellbent on exhuming the rotted skeletons of our past. For the dead have much to teach. And it's only a matter of time before Dracadia's most depraved secret is resurrected. Okay. <laughs> see if i'm interested city of gods and monsters is also really interesting and i have been wanting to read it for a while and maybe this would be a good time to read it i also keep seeing tori post pictures of nightshade which is a dark paranormal gothic romance interesting my father called them messengers he once told me they were walked among us and that somewhere in this dark and godless city there shined a faint sliver of hope i only had to look for the signs well i've spent my whole life investigating the inexplicable and all i found are the unsettling vestiges of iniquity the evidence of another world shrouded by the obscure okay this sounds um vocabulary -y. purgatory of summer depravity hides in shadows and girls like me are a little more than delicious bites of temptation others call it nightshade this peculiar place is where i first met the cold and callous recluse living in a decaying cliffside cathedral jericho Ho Van Qua, what a name, um, is the epitome of everything I've been told to fear, a raven-winged harbinger who wears intrigue like a warm black cloak, an enigma that I'm determined to unravel, even if it means getting closer than I should. One touch is forbidden, even so much as a kiss would be my demise, but the scent on his lips burns me up like a wild flame, and his growing infatuation weakens my resolve. Giving him what he wants, though, will mean no chance for redemption or escape. What's worse is the signs I've followed yet failed to see all these years begin to unmask a terrifying reality. The falling may be my only saving grace. I'm into the idea of a gothic situation. I love me a good paranormal romance. I could be really into this. Okay, let's talk about Worthy of Fate. I have seen this on a couple people's TBRs. I've seen this on Bookstream a couple times. It doesn't necessarily sound like something that would be fall specific, but in the very end, it does say a new adult dark fantasy romance. If it's a dark fantasy romance, I'm into it. But also if it's fate, I don't necessarily feel like fate usually pulls very dark romance. So I might go ahead and download this one, but then just kind of hold off and just see if I'm in the mood for something like this. But this synopsis for this one, marked by the gods, Kaya is forced to partake in a trial for a chance to be deemed worthy. If she succeeds, she'll be gifted great powers. If she fails, she could lose her life or worse. But that's only at the start of her worries. Now the same plague that took her home is spreading and threatening the fate of the realm. Okay, I see the dark. Maybe. This could be fun. I like how fun is a word choice in that. Can Kai survive the trial of the gods and gain the needed power to rid the world of the growing threat before it's too late or will she be drawn to what awaits her in the shadows? Riker has waited a long time for her, his mate. Now he's found her. He plans to claim what is rightfully his, but dark forces threaten to destroy his nation. Should he embrace the bond he so desperately desires? Unable to escape the drive to be near her, he waits for his precious gem lingering in her shadow. Worthy Fate is the first book in a new adult dark fantasy romance series with an intriguing magic system, dark forces, spirits, and forbidden fated mates could be interesting okay i think i'm going to stop here there are quite a few books on this tbr already however i'm thinking that i'm kind of in the mood for some thrillers so if you have any good thrillers especially that are on ku let a girl know down below however if there are also any other like more dark fantasy romances that you're into let a girl down below however these are some ones that i will be excited to be reading both across fall and into november and december i feel like november and december are also really good months for spooky dark fantasy even though it's more like christmas time i feel like i'm always into dark fantasy and definitely around the winter times so i'm glad that we kind of got my kindle reset and rechecked all the things have been found all the things have been added at this time of year and i'm so excited to just have some good options at my fingertips here ready to go anyways thank you so much for watching this video i hope you either found some good recommendations off of this video or if you're planning on reading any of these or if you've even already read them let a girl know down below because i feel like uh, some of these are pretty popular some of these don't a lot of people have talked about just yet regardless i'm excited about all of them if you've made it this far into the video and don't have anything else to say go ahead and leave a ghost emoji because it's time i'm feeling i kind of feel like i've already moved past the cozy fall and i'm into the spooky fall it's october it's literally october 1st today so it's timely anyways thank you so much for watching this video i hope you have a great rest of your day or night wherever you are and i will catch you in the next one